So, the reason last time, the very first episode thing, my room was a bit neater, uh, but that's mostly because my bed was, my bed was made, and I can't really make my bed right now because, as you can see, my cat is taking a nap on it, and I don't want to move her because she is rather adorable sleeping right there. So, that's why my bed isn't made. <laughs> so, yeah, this is episode two. I'm going for another stab at this. Um, as I did last time, I have nothing planned. I'm just gonna start talking and see where it takes me. Um, so this morning. Um, okay, so every Saturday, my grandpa and I, we go out for breakfast and we have breakfast together. And it's nice. Like, my grandpa, he's a great guy. I enjoy spending time with him. It's good. Um, but today... My grandpa, my grandma, and my mother, and myself, we were going to go see the new Hunger Games movie, Catching Fire, and, uh, just because we've all read all of the books, and they're, they enjoy it more than I did, I, but yeah, so we were going to go see the movie, it was gonna be, it's like, it's been out for, like, a day now, we were gonna see the, er, the very first show, we are gonna see the first show of today. So it was about 10 in the morning. And so we drove over there. And so a bit of backstory. Um, about a week or two ago, my doctor, he, um, he can't really see it in this lighting, but along my forehead and about here, my, I have a bad case of acne. <laughs> um, like, yeah, you really can't see it in this lighting, but, uh, Anyways, so it's become, the acne has become so deep that it could lead to scarring. So he actually prescribed me um, capsules to take, like pills basically. And like two a day, once in the morning, once at night. And um, he said that after about a week or two, one of the side effects could include a very upset stomach and it's been about a week or two, and so I was fine, fine, completely fine yesterday and the day before that. And um, today I woke up and I was feeling okay, but then the moment I got in the car to go to the theater, um, I felt like a little queasy, I guess the word best is the best word, and so we drove all the way to the theater, and I just sort of stayed quiet, you know, just my eyes closed, you know, just hoping that my stomach would calm down. And then when we got to the theater, like, it was still about ten minutes before the theater itself opened, and I made this noise. It was like a, it was like a mix between a burp and, like that, <laughs> A burp and that mixed together is pretty much the sound I made. Like, the sound, like, it was a vomiting noise. Um, and so my mom instantly looked at me and said, Are you going to throw up? And so I replied, I, 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 uh, maybe. And so she said, Well, get out of the car. I love my mom. <laughs> but yeah, so, like, I went out of the car. And again, ten minutes before the theater opened, and it was freezing cold out. Like, I live... Boston and it's winter, so it was cold. Like I had a jack, I had a full winter coat on, and the wind was just so strong. But yeah, so I waited outside for about five minutes, um, just slightly hunched over the trash can, feeling like I was about to vomit, but then not vomiting. Like it was just sort of um, dry heaving almost. But after a while, my stomach calmed down, and so like I, so um, my mom had come over, and so. They managed to let, we met, um, a doorman, he let me in about five, ten minutes early before the theater opened just because he knew I needed a bathroom, you know. So I went into a bathroom, waited there for a bit. Uh, you think that this is going to ha okay. I know that the story sounds like it's going to have a really gross ending, but it's actually, I think it's kind of funny. So... After a little bit, you know, like 10, 15 minutes of just sort of hanging out in the bathroom, 
it felt like my stomach had almost completely calmed down. And I was thinking, okay, maybe it's just passing, maybe it passed. And so I thought, so I told my mom, okay, so I think I can still but like watch the movie. I think my stomach has calmed down. You think we should just head into the theater and then stay by one of the exits and then that way if I start feeling sick again I can just leave um and so that's what we were planning on doing but then uh, we still had to wait in line to get into the movie because again we had gotten there right as the theater opened and so there's still a bit of time before the movie started and so we would have to wait in line to get into the theater itself because we were going to watch it at the IMAX so I said, like, can I just wait in the bathroom, though, because I don't really want to stand this whole time. So I went into the bathroom, and I knew I was going to vomit. Like, the moment I got in there, I just knew. So, but I still had, like, a... Like, I knew that I was going to vomit, but uh, I had, like, maybe a few-minute grace period before it really... So, uh, like, I set myself up, I uh, took my jacket off... I uh, put I spread some toilet paper across the floor where I was going to kneel. <laughs> I got some I got like a bit of water. I got a bottle of water ready to to swish my mouth with afterwards. Like I got ready. <laughs> and then I realized that I'm about to vomit in a public place. That's just gonna be gross for anybody else who comes into the bathroom. And so I pulled my phone out. And I looked up the song uh, Fur Elise by Beethoven, and I just played that at full volume, and I started vomiting. So, I was vomiting while listening to classical music. <laughs> just, just imagine that for a moment. <sighs> yeah. So then after, after I vomited, though, we just left the theater, because, like, well, we gave some time for my stomach to calm down, make sure that I'd be okay for the car ride back. And then we just left, you know? We didn't even bother trying to go see the movie. We managed to get our money back, you know? But, um, yeah. So, interesting thing about vomiting. Uh, I'm not going to be gross about this, but it's like... It wasn't like... It felt like the opposite of swallowing a pill. Because I've been swallowing a lot of pills ever since the doctor prescribed those to me, the acne stuff. And, uh, yeah, I feel, I feel like I've gotten pretty good at it. But, uh, yeah, it feels like the opposite of doing it. So, like, instead of forcing it down your throat, it's like you're forcing it up. I'm sorry, I didn't mean for this to come out so disgusting. It's just like, that's what happened to me today, and it's just the most... <sighs> it makes for an interesting story, you know? Like, people don't... Yeah. Like, you probably haven't heard a story like this, I'm hoping. Okay. Let's vomit, you know, blowing chunks while listening to Beethoven. <sighs> so yeah, uh, that's what happened this morning. And then I spent the rest of the day playing video games. Actually, um, the game I'm playing right now, I have it on my desk, is an N64 game. I used to play it a lot as a kid, but I haven't even touched it in years. So, um, I got kind of interested in seeing, um, if it, how well it held up. Because I remember it being a lot of fun, and the concept to it is something that hadn't been done in a while, or ever so, uh, it's called, a uh, Space Station Silicon Valley. And basically it's... <coughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Space Station Silicon Valley. And the way it's played is, uh, it's like a fairly linear level, but the kind of linear where it's like, you need to do this thing and solve this puzzle but they still give you a bunch of different, like, mechanics and tools to use, so it feels like there are a bunch of different ways to go about doing it. Um, and so, in each level, 
it's like animals, basically. You can, um, you can possess animal, if you, any animal that you can kill, you can then possess. So, like, you'll start out playing as, say, a dog, and if you kill a fox, then you can take o- you can possess the fox, and you'll have direct control over that animal. Like, you stop controlling the dog, you start controlling the fox. And, um, it's interesting, like, how they go about doing it and stuff. And, like, each animal has completely different, you know, like, completely different mechanics to it. Like, if you're a fox, then you have, like, a an attack where you, like, sweep the floor in front of you with your tail, and you can, like, do, like, a sudden dash. And, uh, it, or if you're playing as, say, a king penguin, then you can, uh, like, you have a jetpack. Or if you're playing as, say, a fish, like, you can play as a fish and then go straight into controlling an elephant, depending on the level. Like, it's cool. Like, it's really creative. Like, I wish that there, it, this, I wish that this game got a sequel. I really do. Um, maybe it did. I mean, I'm, I've never looked into it. Maybe it got a sequel. That would actually be... That would make my day if I found out that Silicon Valley got a sequel. Assuming that it was a good sequel. Because I feel like... I mean, it's an N, it's a 3D N64 game, so movement is a bitch. <laughs> like, the controls are just horrendous. So that really lowers the quality, in my opinion. And so I feel like, though, if they just got the graphics up a bit and got the controls tighter, it would be an amazing game as opposed to just an interesting one. Yeah, so like that that's what I've been doing for the past day or two is playing that game. And I've also started rewatching an anime called Bakano. Sorry, it's called Bakano because there's an exclamation point at the end, so Bakano is how you're supposed to pronounce it, I'm assuming. And it's basically an anime about a... It's an anime about... Sorry, it's just hard to just suddenly describe the plot. It's not an anime about beginnings or ends. There are about three or four different storylines, which are going on at three or four different times, with mostly different characters. There are a few characters who bounce between plot lines. But, um... The major plot line, like, the main, main one, is, um... A train... A conflict that happens on a train during, um... Well, no, they all take place, for the most part, during a Prohibition America... Prohibition era, Jazz Age America. So, like gang wars, turf disputes, and like that, and that fascinates me, you know, like, I really, I like the romanticized image of the Jazz Age America. I am aware that it's the romanticized version, but I still love it, you know, Al Capone. But, um, anyways, so, there are, say, one of the plot lines is this conflict that's going on over a train, where there are these two groups trying to take over the train and kill a bunch of dudes, and then there's one plot line about a little girl trying to find her brother who started, who was um a, mo- a member of one of the mafia groups, or not mafia, her. Out of curiosity, is um I've never actually known this. Is there a, you know how there's like there's this family, and there's that family, and they're, like, families, like, crime families, you know? Um, is the Mafia a specific family, or is the Mafia just, like, a a general term used to describe any sort of organized crime organization? That's something that I should look up. (laughs) Anyways, uh, who started... A little girl looking for her brother who got involved with organized crime groups. And then there's, like, this whole thing about, like, immortal immortality, and it's amazing. 
it's like it has some of the best characters that I've ever seen ever <laughs> in anything um even the characters that really are kind of inconsequential to the plot have a lot of like backstory to them or a lot of character to them and that's amazing um what else it's messed up is the thing <laughs> like it's brilliant and amazingly written and the acting is incredible but it's so messed up oh god like look up um there's a youtube video it's um like i'm making sausages it's titled it's um a bacano it's a clip and it sums up one of the characters so perfectly but yeah so anyways um bacano that's i've been rewatching it and it's fantastic <laughs> like one of my favorite animes i'd say and that's pretty much been the past few days and I'm sad to say that I did not think of a new outro, so you're going to have to bear with it for a bit. So, this has been The Court Jester, or Nick. Later. <laughs>